I don't know how to start this one because obviously it's been a month since we last did Kakatsu's story and I'm just like can I do all the voices again? Can I actually do all the voice acting again? Because I don't know. I'm not. Ne I'm not necessarily gonna even lie to you. I feel kind of cringe at the moment because I'm just like, oh, I gotta do all these voices again. I gotta get back in the zone of all this stuff. So it's gonna be kind of weird, honestly. But still, I want to necessarily do it because this is going to be the end of Kodoko's part. But point is, when it comes to the Kakatsu story and whole thing with Kodoko's part, is that I want to at least try to do something to fix it in a way even if it's not necessarily canon and anything like that i would like to just go out of my way to i guess fix the problem that shouldn't have even been there in the first place i'm not necessarily gonna lie i completely forgot everything that happened in the last episode all i know is that blue fought madaka i think tanya had to pretty much give jay a whole pep talk and i think we tried to talk to tatsumaki i think that was one of the major three things that happened Actually, I think that's what I think that's all the events that happened. So, yeah, which was pretty interesting. But anyway, also and also, I think we have a new character that was introduced. So, yay! I am very late to do this. So obviously, we have to cover after the fight what happened to Blue and Madaka, and obviously Blue won that fight. And when it comes down to things, Toko is just questioning New Girl about the whole situation. So Aoki is the girl's name, and so basically she's just like, So the spare been beating you guys down? Am I getting that right? And so Toko's just like, Yeah, we've been dealing with it for some time now. <sighs> I'm just glad Blue's doing fine. And so Aoki's just like, She doesn't look it, but she's a really tough chick. So anyway. You already explained what this place is, but when we got here, you mumbled something about coming from a dream or something? What did you mean by that? And so Toko explains basically, she's just like, Despair brought Blue here by a friend of ours. So just like another person we know about, I'm guessing same goes for you. You came from a dream. Whatever life you lived isn't the real reality. And so Aoki's just like, really? Actually? That's... That kind of makes sense. And so Toko's like, huh? And so basically Aoki's just like, That was more of a nightmare, honestly. All of my people dying in a war we didn't even start. All my friends were gone and I was all alone. The Wolpians took everything from us. The way things were going felt like a nightmare because it really was. But I remember a legendary warrior trying to stop the war and save our people. He was the reason I wanted to fight against them. And so Toko asks, who was he? And Aoki's like, I don't know, but there were seven girls and three boys including him. The main guy had blue hair, and it's the same race as I. And so Toko just like, wait, you you mean Jay was in the dream world? That's impossible. How how would he? And then so Aoki just like, wait, you know him? He's in this world and he's real? <laughs> So, a so Toko just like, uh, what's up with you? And so Aoki kind of just started having a whole fangasm. So she's just like, I've always wanted to see him for myself. I'm a really big fan of his because of the war. I gotta meet him. And so a she goes on, she's just like, I want to get to know him. It will be a dream come true. And so Toko just like, okay, okay, jeez, shish. <sighs> if we figure out how to solve our current problem, I'm sure you'll be able to see him. If you want it that much, then you better help us. He definitely needs all the help possible. So Aoki's just basically getting like excited like she's a kid getting her favorite toy or something. And so to even Toko just mentioned it, she's just like, what a child. And so, yeah. Um, yeah, Aoki is a bit of a fan of Senpai, honestly. She, she's, she's a bit of a fan thanks to the war. That's, that's essentially what ends up happening honestly and also yes the seven girls and the three guys is also a reference to the story i'm currently writing in the original anime that real well really jay actually comes from as well as saki and momo the girls that you met in that one video that i wanted to introduce to you guys so yeah but anyway we go on to act two and monica on the lolly side of the safe haven that side of reality kodoko's version of it and so monica is just basically like please follow me Kotoko will use you for ultimate humiliation. And so Hiyoko's like, I haven't even done anything to her. Why do I need to satisfy her perverted needs? And so Monica's just like, it is what she desires. So it will be. Even if you say no, 
will still use you. And so Hyoka just like, you can't be serious. I don't even want any of this. And so Konako just come out the, you know, out from outside from talking to Tatsumaki. It's nighttime now and all that. And so Konako just like, you're right. We don't want this either. And so Monica just like, you and brother are essential to the activity tomorrow. You'll be behind him in a human centipede chain. Please follow me to prepare. We know what happens if you say no. And so Konako just like, I don't understand any of this. How can someone that used to lead the Warriors of Hope be reduced to a maid? Why be useless in someone's errand girl? And so Monica looks at Hyoko, contemplating about her past life for a second. And Konako just like, while I don't agree with you and all the things you have done, this doesn't mean that you should be the property of despair. You need to be yourself again. <sighs> we already know you can't top. We already know you can top her. So why be disobedient to her? And so at this point, Monica just starts crying. She's just like, because I, I realized how much of a jerk I was to Kotoko. That's why. That's why I'm taking all of this. I regret it. And so she's continuing on, she's like, That's why I also became Big Brother's sister. I just wanted the manipulation to stop and be friends again, but I hurt her so much. And so Konika went up to her and hugged her, and to Yukari's surprise, honestly. And she was just like, Konika. And so Konika was just like, Again, I can't understand everything, but I get that you don't want to hurt anyone anymore. You hurt her the most, so you're enduring her punishment. But this can't go on forever. You have to accept responsibility and move forward. You understand me? And so Monica cries a little bit, but she tries to compose herself basically. And so Monica's just like, you're going after her, right? I have no right to ask for this, but please don't kill Kodoko. Promise me you'll save her. And so Kodoko's like, I wasn't planning on killing anyone. Though, it won't be easy, but I can promise that. And so Yukari just like, we'll think of something, and we'll definitely save her. So Monica just thanks her, and honestly, Konika just like, but you should try to keep away from her suspicion. So just do what she asks of you. We'll stop her soon, so don't worry, you two. So Monica agreed and took Kyoko to the prep room. And so Yukari just like, so do you actually have a plan? And Konika just kind of not really having a total big idea of a plan at the moment and she's kind of like contemplating to herself but that's when we finally get to see mommy again so alice kind of comes out of the corner just like you can't just promise something if you don't know what to do but it does seem like q and j are trying to end this as soon as possible and so yukari just like got any ideas i got one idea but i wouldn't know how to do it and so alice is just like I actually have a way to trap her and for your plan to take place. I won't promise anything, but I'll see if I can pull some strings to find someone in the other reality to bring them here. With her crazy ass, we might actually have a solid plan. And so, yeah, it's gonna be up to Alice to kinda help us out of this predicament. Now, fun fact for Act 3 of this story, I wrote Act 3 on accident twice. <laughs> like, if you literally scroll through the JX the Jason 5 X Stories hashtag on Twitter, you will find that there is two versions of Act 3 written differently. Well, not too differently, but they're written differently enough. I am going to do the most recent one I've written because I feel like that has more stuff written better, personally. And, you know, I didn't know I written it twice. I thought I did it once and I didn't know. So that's kind of honestly very hilarious to me that I've written this thing twice. Why didn't no one tell me? Anyway, point is, Act 3, the most recent one, honestly. So this time, we are all going to start trying to do this plan and everything is starting to take place. And, you know, we're going to make sure we get what we have to do when it comes to this plan, thanks to Alice. So basically, we're in a gym. This is where Kodoko wants us to be. And so Monaco is just like, Mitsusugi. They have arrived. And so Konako's just like, Well, well, well. I really thought you wouldn't have shown up. And so Konako's just like, We literally don't have a choice. And Konako's just like, Well, either way, this is gonna be the ultimate punishment for you both. You may stand tall now, but when you're literally eating shit from each other, you'll die of embarrassment. Maybe it won't be the worst for Jay since he'll have a girl to eat out. Konako, could you love him even if you had to eat his poop? 
And so, Koniko cringes just at the idea. Just in, I mean, yeah, I don't care who you are. Even if we are in a relationship or you're my wife, I don't want to eat the crap that's coming out of you. I don't want, no, no. This is why human centipedes are horrible. Don't do this. Please don't do this. Junko kind of just pops out of nowhere and she just like, since you haven't started yet. And so Koniko is kind of surprised to see her here because, you know, she obviously is a busy lady. She has other obligations. And so Kodoko just like, Big sis, you're just in time. Once Yukari and Hyoko gets here, you'll see. And then Junko just cuts her off. She's just like, actually, we need to discuss something. Let's go somewhere else so they can't hear us. And so Kodoko just like, oh, uh, oh, okay. Uh, Monica, keep a watch on them. And so basically they leave the gym and just start walking into the hallway. And so Kodoko just like, so what's wrong, sis? And so Junko just like, you almost fell for their trap. Yukari is on Jay's side now, and he would have controlled the situation if I wasn't there. And so Kodoko just like, Yukari? Betra she betrayed me? Bitch! And so Junko just like, keep walking quickly. And so they basically get to the cafeteria now. And so Junko's just like, huh, they were going to use you as bait to lure me out. But I'm smarter than that. So I got to you first. You need to start being careful of your company. And so Kodoko's just like, I'm sorry. You're not going to be mad at me because I failed again, right sis? And then Junko just says, possibly. Answer me this. What is true motivation to you? And Kodoko's just like, true motivation? You you know what it is. Now, I use that past as a part of what I do to others. Even you know this, sis. Demons need to pay. And so Junko's just like, really? I think it's more different than that. Personally, I'm motivated by one man. And then she starts weirdly drooling. And so she's like, that one man, I can't get off my mind. <laughs> If I can just have them to myself, I would be complete. This is something that may be hard for you to understand, Kodoko. And so Kodoko just like, Big sis, are you feeling okay? You look nasty. And so Junko starts to just melt emotionally. And then something weird starts happening and Kodoko immediately notices. And she's just like, wait. Who are you? And so physically, Junko's body just starts dripping and falling apart, and, and, and it's finally revealed that it's Toga the entire time, disguised as Junko. Because remember, Toga took some of Junko's blood when Kaede was killed that one time a long time ago. She took some of that blood and obviously kept it for some valuable reasons. So obviously, this was the plan. Alice was trying to cook up, honestly. So Toga's just like, Ehehe, you were never really that smart, were you? And so Kodoko's like, This is impossible! Demons aren't allowed in this reality! So how did- And then someone came from the behind and sh- Well, not shanked her, but pretty much put a syringe into her neck and injected something into Kodoko's body. So, and after that, Kodoko's body fell to the ground and she felt really heavy to the point she can't necessarily stand up. And it was Tanya that gave her that same injection. So Tanya just like, You really are naive. Trusting everyone and thinking we'll follow you without anything to offer for us. And so Kodoko just like, Tanya! And so I'm just like, good shit Tanya. I got it from here. And so I'm just kneeling down to Kodoko at this point. I'm just like, hey there. How's it going? And so I'm just like, <laughs> If you really thought I was going to find a way out of this situation, then you should stay even more in a child's place. And if you didn't want demons to come here, you really shouldn't have left the way for them to get in. You can thank that nurse for that. And so basically what that refers to is obviously Mikan, because Mikan is the only other adult that adult-like person to Kodoko that exists in the safe haven. So when it comes down to things, we exploited whatever she did to bring her here and brought Toga here. So that's what Alice basically did. Alice is a beast in this universe, actually. So obviously, this pisses off Kodoko to a high degree. And weirdly enough, after so, after hearing this, she gotten eerily calm. And so Kodoko's like, You don't understand. None of you demons could. I can never understand the way any of you think and how all of you can just so easily forgive and move on with your lives like it's nothing. I can't live life like that. And so Kodoko's just like, 
Can you imagine being used like a toy for so long you can barely think? To live in a world where no one cares about you. What am I supposed to do with these feelings? Tell me that. And so I'm just like, you move on the best way you can. Whether it's by friends or something else, keep going. And so Konako just snaps, but she's like, but it's not fair. Why didn't anyone save me? Why? Why wasn't, why was no one there to help me? I'm sick of it. I am not about to keep on like this. You will all feel how they have done to me. With that, Kodoko will release her despair and his effects just started affecting everybody. And I'm just like, Ugh, what is this? And suddenly everyone started hearing voices, the people who abused Kodoko in the past to fulfill their desires. And one man is just like, such a sweet body. I love outside and gentle she is. And then I'm just like, wait, that's... And then obviously, immediately to act, I lost count. Act 4, we just kind of just seeing everything that happens right now and kind of just dealing with Kodoko's past and everybody's feeling it. Like, it's not just something that you visually see, this is something that you're feeling. So every thrust, you're also feeling that. So it's basically like everybody's getting violated just the way Kodoko's getting violated at the same time. So when it comes down to the thing, Kodoko's just like, just move on, just forget and let them get away with them using my body? You couldn't possibly understand this. I hope you feel all of my past. I hope you feel disturbed and violated like those damn demons did to me. All of you deserve this. And so Toga was like, if I was her, I killed them all too. I can understand where she's coming from. I don't give a shit about your life. You were used? So what? Get over yourself. I'll kill you right now. And I'm just like, Tanya, don't you even dare. We are not trying to hurt her. And so when it comes to Tanya, she's just like, I'm not about to keep dealing with this. And so Yukari basically pops in. And so she's just like, it wouldn't solve anything, even if you did end her. Plus, Jay and everyone else would resent you. And so Yukari kneels to Kotoko, the only one that's not really affected by this for whatever reason. And so she's just like, as for you, you really are a handful of a kid. And so Kotoko's just like, you don't know anything about me, traitor. You couldn't bear to understand. And Yukari immediately cuts her off and she explains why she doesn't necessarily understand Kotoko's situation. So she says, my mother was used and put in the same position as you. I was essentially forced to watch as she was violated. She went through that so those men didn't use me and it costed her life. I didn't know how to live with myself for so long, and even when I found a new family and sister to take care of me, I still couldn't forgive those people. I ended up getting revenge, but it killed so many people, and I didn't feel any better. How are we different? And so Yukari at this point offers her hand to Kotoko, and she's just like, in truth, you can make the whole world bleed and die, but you'll never get what you want. Instead of living in the past, focus on what you are now. Just because you lived it doesn't mean you have to stay in it. And so Kodoko is kind of for the first time in her life is just breaking down a little bit, crying honestly, not really knowing what to say. And so Yukari just like, things like this are never easy or fair. You might not think it, but we will never let you go through something like this ever again. And so Kodoko hesitated for a long time, but she finally took Yukari's hand. And it's just, and Jay was just like, <sighs> it's so good to see you finally taking steps for your new life. And finally the despair dispersed away from everybody. And so I'm just like, I didn't know you went through all that. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry to hear that Yukari. And so Yukari's just like, it's fine. I'm better now that I can give guidance to someone else in need. And so Kodoko's just like, you understand me? You, you seen the hell and walked back. Somehow I, I, I want to believe you. And so while we are actually trying to figure this out, and you know, having Kodoko, you know, finally realizing that yes, while life sucks and there's nothing really you can absolutely do about it for a lot of people, it doesn't necessarily have to be the thing that defines your life. And while we're trying to figure this out and try to tell Kodoko all this, 
An even worse despair kind of kicks in, and this time it's not Kodoko's, but it's Junko's despair, and it fills the room. And this is our final act of the story. And so Junko just like, and this is why I had no faith in her. But I guess he did something I thought was impossible. It's just a shame that she won't be happy with how the ending will turn out. And so I'm like, Junko? Where are you? And so Yukari just like, wait, Junko? And so Junko just like, it doesn't matter where I am, but this is about you. I'll give you an opportunity to escape this reality, but it will be Kadoko's punishment. Jay, if you, let's say, use her in a very rough way, forcefully, or kill her, then I'll let you all, es then I'll let you all leave when the world gets merged back together. I'm just like, what? What is wrong with you? And so basically, yeah, obviously, if you can put that two and two together, he, he, basically, if he wants to get out of this reality, is either kill her or McDonald's rep hay, which is very effed up, Junko. Gosh dang. Anyway, Kodoko's just like, Junko, no! Y Yuri, please help me! And so she's basically begging at this point, because obviously, she doesn't want to go through her path again. Who would? So when it comes to things, I'm like, I'm not going to do something like that, Junko. Are you insane? And so Junko's like, then you'll get crushed with the world merger. And I'll happily watch it as it happens. Yuka and Yukari just like, Kodoko, it's not over. We still have our plan. And so I'm just like, wait, what are you doing? And so Yukari just like, I know it's bad. And I know all the stuff we went through is just rough. But... But we need to leave her here so we can escape. We already discussed this as a possible scenario before I joined you. But then I'm just like, but she'll die! And so Yukari just like, I know, but we don't have time. It's everyone in this reality or just her? And I'm just like, Ugh. there ain't no other way. And Yukari just like, we have a deal together. I'll do what you say, but you have to take me to my sister. That's our spell contract. I'm not letting you die here. And so Kodoko just like, she already made up her mind, and so will I. Let this me be my final act in this play. So trust the plan, demon. And so Tanya's just like, shut it already so we can go. You don't want Konika to be lost again, right? I'm just like, I know, but... And so Yukari's just like, I'll drag your ass with me, so stop wasting your energy. I need you for something else anyway. <sighs> Kodoko, I'm really sorry for this, for not being able to stay here with you. This is goodbye. And so Yukari casts a spell, casts some incantation to bring all the other people that's within this reality of the safe haven outside of Kodoko back into the original safe haven before the world merger hits and everybody teleports away from this place. So everybody's gone except for Kodoko. And so it's le and all this does is just leave Kodoko with her final thoughts before she ends up dying. And so Kodoko's just like, <sighs> I regret not apologizing to Monica. Oh well, the me that will be there for her will be motivated enough. And so with that being said, Kodoko in that reality is dead. She's dead with the world merger. So there's no way of getting Kodoko back. So we lost two characters so far, Kaede and Kodoko. And I did not intend for them to have both a K in their name. Anyway, lastly, we have to solve one final problem. Where the hell was Junko? So when it comes down to things, while we were traveling back to the safe haven with Yukari's spell, Junko decided to enter Jay's consciousness as he was traveling back. So I'm starting to wake up and I'm just like, I'm really starting to hate you. And so Junko's just like, how so? I'm just trying to put you in the right direction, unlike that poor bitch that you just left. You really should have effed her. She probably wouldn't bite. Uh, probably. And I'm just like, you're sick. Just how far would you let her go on like that? And then Junko was just like, until I'm bored. Duh. She was getting to that point anyway. I was used by the adults and no one held me. Who cares? And I'm just like, <sighs> and here I thought you actually cared for her for a moment. At least she was still better than you. And so in that brief ass moment, right? In that brief moment, of resentment and kind of somewhat depression of just losing Kodoko, the despair, neo despair version of Jay kicks in. And I'm just like, someone like you is irredeemable. And so Junko's just like, for the first time, like, what is that? 
And so for the first time in Junko's life, she's scared because she doesn't know what the hell this is. And so she's just like, Jay, what the hell is that? And so the despair version of me is just like, despair is not something you can just manipulate over and over. There are consequences. It's finally time you got yours. And for the briefest of moments, what was that? What, did you see that? I didn't see that. Did you see that? That was crazy. Did we just see another version of Junko? I, I, I'm just saying, that was weird. We, you can rewind, obviously, but I really, really would recommend that you don't because what was that? You didn't see that shit. Anyway, basically, Junko was just like, what, what was that? What was that? And so I'm just standing in front of her just like, why are you standing so far away from me? And pull an eyes in and just be like, like I can't reach you. And so basically Junko just like, y you, you, you don't know what you're doing. The despair would drag your ass harder than I ever could. And I'm just like, I'll be the one who decides that. For now, you figure out what you just felt and I'll figure out how to stop you. <laughs> Later despair queen. And that is the end of the Kodoko lolly arc honestly yes this was a long one but still it needed to be done obviously again because i wanted to push that you know notion of that children shouldn't really go through something like that and obviously it's just wrong and it's messed up and hopefully i did kodako's story a little bit justice or at least highlight it enough to the point you know maybe it's done right in a way you know and even if the voice acting and all this type of stuff isn't necessarily convincing the, me the biggest part of this entire thing was the message involved. That's pretty much the whole entire thing. And yes, this one it doesn't necessarily have a lot of nudity and all this type of stuff that we usually have in these episodes. But this was just important and I didn't want to necessarily demean it by throwing that in. So that's why this episode was very special. And obviously, yes, there is still a bunch of questions that we need to answer. Like, we need to know more about this Aoki chick that came out of nowhere from the last episode. We also need to know more about, you know, what Kodoko meant by this me that was going to die in that safe, in that version of the safe haven. Is there another clone of her? How did that work? Is this a part of Yukari's plan? What is going on? What the hell was that other version of Junko doing there? Why was she in existence? What did Jade necessarily do to her? Why is, is this the first time Junko ever seen something like this when it comes to the despair form? You know, many different questions that still need to be answered. And hopefully, this time, when I make episodes again, we can actually be a bit faster than a month. Because that, that was actually kind of stupid. But anyway, this is a long video, and I'm going to just end it right here. So hopefully you did enjoy. If you did, be sure to like, share, subscribe, hit the bell notification when we out. Also, follow me on Twitter. And if you'd like to donate to this channel, Patreon is available as well. And until then, it's your boy, Jay, signing off. Have a say.